Hey folks, no your eyes doth not deceive you. This is a Polaris 10 card, which cost me £135. What started off as me hunting for a used RX 470 to compare with the other 2048 Shader GCN cards ended up with me snagging this on eBay yesterday and it arriving less than 24 hours later at my office. We'll get one thing straight off the bat, this was most definitely a card that was used for mining. Thankfully though, the seller was very open and honest about that, and he also confirmed that it hadn't been run at higher than stock clocks, and more importantly, is still actually in warranty, with receipts while originally being bought less than 12 months ago new. This Gigabyte Gaming G1 4GB model was one of the cheaper RX 480s released, and the first thing I noticed when I took it out the box was the size of it, in a good way. My MSI RX 580 has a hunkin' massive cooler in comparison, great for thermals, but not ideal for everyone. So what does £135 actually get you in the used Polaris section of the GPU bargain basement? Well, let's find out. We're first going to need to see if it works, and if it's actually stable. If you've seen my RX 580 video, you're going to know that there's a certain amount of risk involved when buying mining hardware with the fans having racked up many thousands of hours with the constant use, often at high RPMs. But sticking this into the budget test bench with the Ryzen 5 1400, it boots into Windows first time, the AMD driver installs with no problems, and a quick check at GPU-Z shows that, surprisingly for a mining card, it has the stock G1 BIOS on it. But does it do anything other than sit on the desktop? Well, let's check out 3 Mark and see how it holds up. First off, a stress test. This loops the same scenario for around 10 minutes, keeping the GPU at full load and kicking out a good amount of heat in the process. Three tests and three passes well above 99%, 97% being the threshold for a stable pass in 3 Mark. so we know that as a baseline, it seems to be okay. Booting up MSI Afterburner to monitor things does show up a few little, shall we say, concerns. When the RX 480 was released, there was a lot of noise made, especially with this Gigabyte model, that the cards were not actually able to maintain their advertised clock speeds. Like other modern GPUs, the Polaris GPU will adjust its frequency on the fly if it has both the power and thermal headroom, but here we're dropping well below the advertised 1290 MHz, or even 1266 MHz of a reference RX 480, coming in at a good 100 MHz lower. Power draw in MSI Afterburner is also suspiciously low, the GPU is only drawing about 125 watts during these benchmark runs. From my experience with other Polaris 10 cards, I think it's in need of a little bit more juice, and sure enough, when up in the power limit in MSI Afterburner, it allows us to hit that 1290 boost clock, completely stable, and it adds an extra 5 to 600 points in a Firestrike benchmark too. I should note here though that sliding that power slider all the way to the right doesn't mean that it actually uses all that by default, it simply offers it as extra should the GPU need it. An increase in power however does mean an increase in heat, and a jump from around 125 watts to around 150 on the combined test is an increase of well over 20% that that already pretty anemic gigabyte cooler has to deal with, and it's here we're running into the first and probably predictable issue. As mentioned earlier, mining cards are generally run 24-7 and this card has been doing that for almost a year. Sure, it's running completely in spec and that's not really going to damage the GPU in any way, but it will dry out the thermal paste. When the 480 is amply fed and using more power to hold the quoted 1290 boost clock, it quickly became apparent that the card was struggling to keep cool, heading to well over 70 degrees C. So I think we should get this card out, strip it down and see what's going on. Taking the card apart was a simple case of 6 screws, 4 around the GPU and 2 near the rear I.O. After some gentle persuasion, the card came apart, and it was immediately apparent why we were experiencing thermal issues. The OEM Tim was absolutely rock solid. Breaking out some isopropyl wipes and some cotton swabs, it was cleaned up easily enough though. I also decided at this point to give the card a good dousing in electrical contact cleaner and leaving it to dry for an hour. The heatsink and fan assembly was also pretty dusty, nothing too bad, but certainly no harm in cleaning it while we're waiting. Disconnecting the fan shroud from the heatsink assembly was as simple as removing four screws. For the heatsink itself, some compressed air seen the dust removed, and any tough spots were simply wiped up with isopropyl alcohol. A nice dab of thermal compound and we're good to reassemble. So what's the difference, is there any? Well, I'll be honest, it's pretty huge. 
We still need to ramp up that power slider to feed the card, but now the whole cooling assembly easily handles the 1290 core clock speed. Running through the Time Spy stress test, so 10 minutes at 100% GPU usage, we hit only 63 degrees, which is an amazing difference considering we were over 10 degrees more within a couple of minutes prior to the cleanup. So yep, this RX 480, it appears to be a good one so far. There's always that certain degree of risk when you're buying used components, but on the whole, this was a clean enough car to start with. No coil wine, and now that it's cleaned up and repasted, it's performing exactly how I would have expected if I bought the car new. £135 though, I sold a 4GB RX 380 a couple of weeks back at online auction for the same price. And for that kind of money, I really don't think you could get a better card than one of these bigger Polaris cards. So it's really up to you to decide if something like this is worth the risk, and if the price justifies that risk that's involved. For me though, well to put it into perspective, I bought the GTX 1050 Ti for just about a year ago, and it cost more. But I'll leave it there for today folks, thanks so much for watching, as ever this channel it's all down to you the viewers, and I appreciate all the support in the comment section, Patreon, and every share, like and subscribe that I've received since starting. But for now, take care, let me know what you think of this little 480, and I'll see you all in the comment section down below, and in the next video.